Now, one of the things that Graham Wood taught everyone that's alive and well today is the willingness to make mistakes. And at Wawa, we joke about, we don't do things right the first time, but we'll get it right the second or third time. Years ago, this goes back 40-some years ago, Wawa had Wawa kitchens at the stores. It actually made hamburgers, fried chicken, and french fries. It failed miserably because we had a deli and people said, what are you doing with fried chicken and what are you doing with hamburgers? We actually sold gas 40-some years ago, but we co-branded with major gas retailers and had small sites. So in both cases, we failed the first time, but we've come back decades later and restaurant quality food is very much a part of our DNA today, and gas is very much a part of our DNA today. Even though today we have 640 stores, throughout our 50-year history, we closed 392 stores. We failed in Connecticut, sold off Connecticut, and said we'll chalk that up to experience, and decided to open stores in Virginia. Stores that we outgrow, stores that look old, that we can't relocate, we close. And so many businesses and retailers don't like to close things. But we have found that if you have assets that are not looking good, it brings down the image of the entire company. So that's why we fight so hard and we're very patient to try to relocate old stores into new stores where we can upgrade uh, our brand. Key strategy. You know, what is a key strategy at Wawa? Philadelphia Magazine did an article, Wawa Wawa's everywhere. Why do they build stores so close to each other? You know, they have one here, why do they want one there as well? Well, number one, it keeps the competitor out. Who in their right mind will come into Wawa land and build stores among five or six Wawa's? But more importantly, it makes us look bigger than life. People think we're this huge, huge retailer because we have so many stores. Well, we are big here but we choose a smaller concentrated geographic area. We don't spread ourselves thin so that we are bigger than life. And if you want top of mind awareness, you have to be bigger than life. We want Wawa to be on everyone's mind every single day, so you've gotta have a lot of locations to do it. Plus, when you have a lot of locations, then you can have a bakery that delivers fresh every day to the stores. You can have a commissary that delivers cut fruit and green salads and veggie snacks fresh every day to the stores. And you can have oil tanks in the port of Wilmington, Delaware, and import oil from around the world, bring up uh, refined fuel from the Gulf of Mexico, and get it throughout the marketplace, because you have so many stores that it gives you economy of scale. So when we decided to go to Florida, we made a commitment, we're gonna open 300 stores, because we wanna create another Wawa land like we've created here that will give us critical mass, because critical mass wins the hearts of customers, top of mind awareness, and gives you economy of scale that others would dream of. So we have dedicated warehouses, dedicated storage tanks, dedicated logistics systems that others don't because of that critical mass. Now, what are some of the major milestones in Wawa's first 50 years? Well, clearly opening the first store in Folsom, Pennsylvania in 1964 was a major milestone. And it didn't come easy, and Graham Wood had a fight to get it open, uh, but it's turned out to be a remarkable success. In 1975, for the first time, we sold hoagies and coffees, coffee. And you would think that came out of the corporate office and a strategic initiative. Well, it didn't. Store managers on their own began to brew coffee. Actually, a store manager came in one day. He brought in his own coffee pot for himself. And customers walked in and said, boy, I love that aroma. Pour me a cup. He said, I can't do that. I'll get fired. It's not an approved product. Well, our store managers are empowered. You know, with a reason, they know what to do. Well, back in those days, they decided to sell coffee. Coffee is now our number one gross, gross profit maker. Talk about servant leadership, it's empowering other people, getting out of their way, letting ordinary people do extraordinary things. Customers came into other stores and said, look, you got a deli, you sell bread, can't you make me a sandwich? Nope, it's not a corporate program. But enterprising store managers on their own began to make sandwiches that eventually turned into hoagies. Well, what are we known for today? Coffee and hoagies. And it happened because we had passionate people in our stores and the willingness of leadership to say, oop, I don't know everything. 
I better listen because you have a better idea. Uh, and in 1977, another major milestone was when Dick Wood, Graham Wood's cousin, became CEO of the company, and he really turned Graham's vision for Wawa into reality and provided the structure and the organization and the discipline and the people know-how to make the business wonderful. Uh, when I think about some of the major initiatives that have really shaped us over the past 20 years. Back in 1994, we debated, should we build small stores or big stores? We even debated to do what Subway does and have a lot of real small locations. And we tried small locations like Subway, and then we built this one big store near the airport in Philadelphia, uh, which was at the time about 5,500 square feet, double the size of our normal stores, and that store was an immediate success. So we learn bigger is better. Now, big's not, you know, 5,000 square feet's not big to Walmart, but in the convenience store industry, it's big. So that was a major milestone. In 1995, we put in ATM machines. Back in those days, they were called Mac machines. And we debated, do you charge the customer to get their own money or not? So we decided, look, it's your money. We shouldn't have a surcharge on our ATM machines. So at Wawa, ever since 1995, we've had ATM machines, but you do not have to pay a surcharge. You go to a lot of locations today, you pay two bucks to get your own money. In fact, my biggest regret as a marketing person, I had this beautiful campaign that I was gonna run to promote that fact, and there were gonna be billboards everywhere in Philadelphia, and the billboard was Bank Rob's Man. But our partner did not want us to run that campaign, <laughs> a banker. But we have a great partner, PNC, who has been with us from the very beginning. You talk about strategic partnerships. We, together, have developed the highest performing ATM network anywhere uh, because we don't surcharge. In 1996, we went in the gasoline business, and we debated that forever. We failed the first time we did it, and should we go back into it? Because some of the board of directors and family members said, well, gas and food don't go hand in hand. You know, you'll take away from your food image. So I give Dick Wood tremendous credit. He said, we're going to go in the gasoline business because the gasoline retailers were going into the food business and becoming more competitive, although they really haven't succeeded with that. So we built our first gas store in 1996 uh, in Millsboro, Delaware. And we built a big store on a big piece of property uh, with big gas, 16 fueling positions. And the question was, if you build it, will they, came? Will they come? And we priced low. We priced below competition. Back in those days, I think that store opened up at 89 cents a gallon. Uh, and that was, that was back in 1996. Well, did they come? People not only came with their cars, they came with their boats, they came with their trucks. And that store was an immediate success. So then we opened um, our uh, second store, and that was Great Adventure. Uh, and that was even a bigger success when we opened that store. So we've never looked back, and today, more than half our stores are fuel stores. You talk about the value embracing change. We now have 380 out of the 640 stores that are uh, fuel stores. Now, fuel has baggage, because no history, no retailer in the history of mankind that sells fuel has good food. We started with food, which is the tough business, and added fuel, which is easier but you're guilty by association because when people see those gas pumps, they say this can't be a restaurant. Uh, so we have to you know, overcome that to a great degree. Today we sell in the 600 or 380 locations 1.8% of the gas in the United States because we sell so much fuel in each and every location. We sell for less, but we sell more uh, than our competitors do. Uh, in 2002, we put touchscreens into our stores. When you ordered a hoagie up to that point, you'd go up to the deli. You know, the deli person would write down your order, put on a glove, make it, and then talk to the next person. So we needed to speed the transaction because our parking lots get filled. And our success is spinning the parking lots. If you can turn a parking place every five minutes, you make money. So we love you, but we love you for five minutes because we want to spread our love, to, uh, spread our love to the next group of customers. Because the average transaction in our business is low. It's five, six dollars. So you gotta have a lot of transaction. So we learned through touchscreen, we could facilitate speed. You're time starved, you wanna get in and out quickly anyway. 
and it made the whole process more accurate. And that just had tremendous impact on our business. Then in 2007, 2008, the recession came along, and we tightened our belts, and we did two things. One, we invested in our people. We actually improved the ESOP. We actually improved wages, uh, and we lowered prices. And during the recession, 2008, 2009, 2010, we had some of our best years we've ever had. So when the economy began to get better, we said we need to expand this business. So in 2012, two years ago, we opened our first store uh, in Florida. And we chose Orlando because it created magic for Disney. Maybe it would create magic for Wawa. And people say, why do you want to go to Florida? Isn't there enough geography here? Well, the fact was, it was hard to find space here to get zoned and permitted for gas, whether it be in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, uh, or Virginia, or even in Maryland, was getting more and more difficult. It's improved because the economy slowed down uh, and people have viewed Wawa and convenience stores a little bit differently. So today, we have two markets, Mid-Atlantic and we have Florida. And in both cases, we're going to open about 25 stores here uh, every year in Mid-Atlantic and 25 stores in Florida. Uh, and New Jersey is a major growth area. We are really pushing north and have a very aggressive program to open more stores in the north. And again, I'm delighted to say that we're going to have three stores in this market area after a decade of trying. And as a privately held company, we have patience, we're perseverance, and it's worth waiting for. So Florida is the gateway to the future, along with more expansion here. We don't want to be a national company. We don't want to be the biggest. biggest. We want to win the hearts of those consumers that we choose to serve. Because if you win the hearts of the consumers that you choose to serve, then you win market share and you win financial success. Uh, and that's what Wawa is all about, share of heart. And customers that come into Wawa, it's a habit-forming experience. You know, we have customers that come in three times a day. And it's just not because they need coffee or caffeine or they need nicotine or they need breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They want that experience. You know, they want to be able to talk to other people. You know, we've had people get married in our stores because they met in our stores. And it's a very low-cost wedding. All, all the coffee and hoagies one can imagine. But seriously, here in New Jersey, we've had weddings in our stores. And I got a letter a couple years ago from a person who was a high school principal who said, I just moved here from out of town. Knew no one. But I go to your Wawa store every morning, and I met this gentleman who would be there every morning. And after a month, I finally said, well, how do you take your coffee? And he responded. And that response ended up being a date. The date ended up being engagement. And the engagement ended up being married. He said, she said, without Wawa, it would never have happened. <laughs> so Wawa is a way of life. It's habit forming. And that's what makes the company so successful. But as the Harvard Business Review said years ago when they published an article, it's a living brand because it's the people day in and day out that nurture the brand. After all, we never sleep 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We never sleep. We have to be there. So to be able to deliver our core purpose, which is to simplify your life, and to help you fulfill your daily routine. You've got to have great people. You've got to have 22,000 people, many of those people who are part-time people who believe in what you're doing. They believe in the higher calling of the company, and that is to have their communities have a better day. And as we talk about at Wawa, we're basically friends and neighbors serving friends and neighbors. So what does the future bring? Well, one thing I know won't change. And that's what Graham Wood and Dick Wood embody. And Dick is still chairman of the board. But Graham, even though he's been deceased for 20 years, is still very much alive and well within Wawa. Servant leadership, attention to detail, the power of the group, teamwork. We don't go out and hire free agents. We hire team players. We are very rigid on that. You cannot run a Wawa store unless you've worked your way up and you believe in the value system. That's what we want from our people. So that's not going to change. Where, what will change will be the product offer. 20 years ago, we would never have imagined that we'd be a big retailer for gas. 20 years ago, we would never imagine going to Florida. Leaping 1,000 miles? You know, for the first 48 years of our history, we creeped out of Pennsylvania to New Jersey, to Maryland, to Virginia, to Delaware. But to leap 1,000 miles 
and skip over North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and start from scratch. Again, uh, Graham's entrepreneurial spirit, along with our desire to take a long-term point of view, made that decision pretty easy. Even though it's not without risk, it's a big financial decision, and it's a big strategic decision as well. So I think the best days for Wawa are yet ahead. You know, we're 50 years old as a retailer. We're over 250 years old as a corporation, and it all started right here in New Jersey, uh, down by Millville. Uh, and who knows what the future is going to bring? But if we stay true to ourselves, and I really think what this book is all about, and I think the Wharton School captured it in a way, is that a company with a funny name, and people want to know who the marketing consultant was that came up with his name, Wawa. Well, it just so happened the dairy was located in Wawa, Pennsylvania. So the dairy took on the name of the town, and the convenience stores took on the name of the dairy. So very simple, uh, native Indian word for Canada goose, Wawa. It shows that a company can stay true to itself, not take Wall Street money, not go public, have great partnerships with the communities they serve, and compete with the major companies in the world. Our biggest competitors are ExxonMobil, Hess, McDonald's, Subway, Dunkin', and Starbucks. So if they can do it, you can too. So, you know, I hope this book helps people who have their own dreams and their own passions and have a value system that, you know, are very important that will sustain them and endure them, not for a decade, but hopefully, you know, for centuries to come. So I want to thank you for being Wawa customers uh, and listening to our story. And I'd be uh, happy to take, I think I probably have about 10, 15 minutes for questions. You know, the one thing I don't know if you all caught it when Howard was speaking, which I find very unique in, in how I think we try to run the chamber, is Howard mentioned when he was speaking to the thousands of associates at his retirement, he said, people I worked for. He worked for them. They didn't work for him. He worked for them. And that's key, I think, to the success you guys have. And we hope to bring those kind of things here, too. So thank you. It's a very nice thing to think about.